Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, we're going to have ourselves a little bit of fun. But before we do, I just want to take a moment and kind of recap some of the things we leaked ahead of last year's 2018 iCast. And for you guys out there finding me for the first time, I think you'll find I do things quite a bit differently. I'm a tackle review channel that reviews everything possible from the most unbiased perspective out there. I don't know any company, anything. I'm not like a lot of other YouTubers out there that have biases, that have favorite companies, that do whatever they can to find reasons to stick up for the brand of the box that's on the table. And I'm not like certain review websites where everything is an eight, which cracks me up. Uh, with <laughs> old school metal body covers. We're good, streaky! They, they, they have, a, they, have <laughs> they have a logo for old school. Ooh, there's a little seal. This is better than what you get in the ballistic. This is, this is this is Shimano level, even though it's a Lego part. Shimano's Super Stopper is kind of proprietary to them. Every other one on the market is basically a Lego part. This is a very, very nice anti-reverse clutch. It's a friction surface of the gear teeth. There are no machining marks. You can see the machining marks on the inside in here, but not on the face of the gear teeth. Uh, <laughs> so it's with that being said, I hope you guys subscribe. I hope you guys check out some of my previously released content. And uh, it's with that being said, 2018 was a, a funny year for, for leaks because uh, to start things off, I leaked the Corrado DC, I leaked the Metanium DC, I leaked the Aldebaran MGL, and I put out the video, I think it was at the exact same time Shimano announced the Corrado DC. It was like minutes apart. It was pretty funny. There was a YouTuber who had kind of put out a video, he did some good editing, but he left about a second and a half of DC wine after he had cast a Corrado. And I kind of let him know I was on to him in a very friendly way. And it was like, oh, Jesus. And by 7 a.m. that morning, Shimano already just like hit launch. And I was like five seconds late. It was pretty funny. So we got those leaks out. We leaked all the pen spin fishers, a long cast, a live liner, and the standard version, along with the long cast reel from their, their carbon composite frame pen conflict. And they ended up later on uh, in the summer sending me every single one of the spin fishers ahead of release. So within, I think it was two months ahead of their release date, I already had them torn into pieces, sitting in a fish tank for an hour and a half. Actually, it was like almost like three hours. Uh, and after that, we, uh, we leaked every single thing that Dio was planning to put out at ICAST 2018. Literally everything. Every reel, every rod, every lure, every fishing line, every jacket, every reel cover. We didn't miss a single thing. And we probably did because it was just like, I'm sitting here on the editor for hours, and I was like, nobody's going to care about this thing. It was like Daiwa shoelaces. So it's with all that being said, uh, here is the 2019-2020 Shimano Stratic. We're going with FL. Uh, the FK that's out right now, the Stratic CI4 FB that's out right now. We think this is the FL. We don't know whether or not this is a carbon composite framed reel. Uh, what we can tell is that they redesigned the rotor completely. This is a ground up new design. It kind of looks like one of the long cast reel designs, how it has kind of a wider arch in the center, but it has that secondary arch that this time around, the center portion of it is kind of recessed. Now, this kind of design is pretty cool. It basically forces the reel to flex in a predictable way. If you look at the way Daiwa does it, Oh, we forgot to mention that this year <laughs> we, uh, we did a full teardown, well, almost a full teardown on the 2019-2020 Certate LT uh, back here in the Bassmaster Classic, and it hasn't even been announced yet in the United States. And yeah, <laughs> yeah there's that too. So back on topic, sorry. Uh, looking at the rotor, it's a completely new redesign. I'm assuming it's going to be of their carbon composite uh, in order to compete with what Daiwa's LT lineup brought to the table last year with the Ballistic and the Tatula and now the Procyon, or Procyon uh, in the $160 to $250 range. Plus, with everything in the other markets from Japan to Singapore to Australia with the Chaldea and the Theories, they got to come out with something. I, I, I can't believe the feedback that I'm getting on these LTs. And right before filming this, I wanted to see if, if Alan Hawk had leaked something. And he just posted, he did his uh, extensive review, or he has an extensive review coming up on the Tatula LT, and it's on his tops list. And it's a spectacular reel, 180 bucks. 
It weighs nothing. It's rock solid, no stem flex. Gears stay perfectly aligned. Machined aluminum cold forge main gear. Machined brass pinion gear. The only thing it doesn't have is any sealing. But in freshwater, you get two years before you really notice anything. And after a season anyway, it's running dry. If you're not doing any, you know, seasonal maintenance or mid-season maintenance or any preventative maintenance. So 99% of people's reels are going to last pretty much for the first year and a half and be in like new condition for 180 bucks. And it weighs ounces less than the Stratic FK at the same price. So Shimano has to come out with something big. And I really like the Stratic. The Shimano Stratic is spectacular. I was hoping to like the Shimano Altegra, but unfortunately being not just a graphite reinforced composite stratic it had the lower end bale wire had some missing features and it just didn't have the same feel that you got in the stratic i was a little disappointed at the 150 160 dollar price range compared to what you're getting out of that tattoo as a step piece when you're looking at shimano and daiwa at that price range so we're hoping that this reel is going to be a significant uh step towards what daiwa did now shimano in this price range, always has incorporated a worm gear oscillation system, system, which is a much more involved oscillation system. It has more parts to move the spool up and down. What you can generally get out of that is a more precise line lay, but the locomotion level winds with the single reduction gear are pretty darn accurate. And if you want to get into the, the techniques of it, the steeper the line lay the more line comes off per wrap. So if you wrap one wrap around a spool that's laying line at 30 degrees at a steeper angle, say than 20 degrees, you're going to have more line coming off the spool. The downside of that is every cast, the line has to transition from coming off the top, switch direction to then start pulling line off from the top down, switch direction to come, coming off the bottom, going back up again. So it's kind of a up in the air thing in terms of which casts better. But nobody can argue with the fact that Shimano Stratix sustains CF4 Pluses, Exences, Stellas. I have them all. I fished them all. They all manage line the best in the industry. Daiwa does a good job. Shimano just does it a little bit better. Whether it be a Stella versus an Exist, whether it's a Certate versus Sustain, Stratix have the same oscillation system found in the Stellas, the same warm gear oscillation, which means they're going to perform like or a little bit better than even the $800 Daiwa. So that being said, it really does look like the gearbox of this new Stratic has a warm gear oscillation system. Otherwise, it would have kind of a kind of wonky look with this out of position screw, you know, that the, uh, what's the Nasky and the Socorro and the Nexave or Nexave, those level of reels have. Uh, next up, it does it look like to be that that handle axle where it goes into that side plate is extraordinarily like beefy. Um, usually, usually that's like a cosmetic, almost like a trim plate that holds the the, the screw itself. The, the male screw that goes into the main gear on reels that have a threaded handle uh, connection. This looks like it's a little bit more beefy in comparison because it looks like it's a 2500 size reel. And at the same time, it looks like that gentleman's pointer finger is the longest pointer finger on the planet. <laughs> I mean, look, it's just, just looking at that picture, it looks like his pointer finger just keeps on going forever. <laughs> um, I'm not going to make any claims that I know whose hand that is. I have my guesses, though. Uh, additionally, it doesn't look like this picture was photographed in the United States. I'm going by the fishing line. I don't know of any Power Pro lime green lines. I know Shimano has a reasonably priced braid. I forgot the name of it. It's an eight-strand, eight-carrier braid that has that lime green color. And I think it's a... Is it a Japanese... Uh, but that's not a Japanese hand. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> so we're going to say that's probably Australia. It wouldn't be the UK. It might, it might be the UK. But yeah, that's just the you know, speculation. And it looks like it has the I-shaped knob. Usually once you go bigger than 2,500, you get the T-shape. 
And man, oh man, I really hope at some point they just stick to that eye shape, even up on the 3,000 size reels. Because it's, I, I, I can't stand those T-shaped knobs. Most of the people that I know aren't fans of it either. What else can we go by here? Man, it's it's tough. It's it's definitely tough to really get anything out of here. We're not seeing an anti-reverse on and off switch. Uh, for me, that doesn't matter. The only time I use the on and off switch uh, because drags in 2019 are smooth enough to pay out line when you need them without any oh bleep moments where it's kind of hanging. Um, only time I use it is when I need to back reel if I have a tangle, but usually I can manage otherwise. So it doesn't have an anti-reverse on-off switch. The spool looks to be of their propulsion design, nothing new there, with a drag knob that looks to be oversized like you would get on some of the Daiwa reels. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's a universal drag knob size that's going to fit up to a four or five thousand. Heck, we don't even know if they're going to have a four or five thousand. We're just going through, you know, what we can see in this very low res image. And um, one thing I do miss, do you guys recall back in the day with the white Stratics where the pivot point of the bail arm do you remember when it was on the inside of the rotor? That was a great feature. It made it much more compact. Why don't they do that anymore? It, it just, it was a great feature back in the day. It was actually a feature and it made that really nice snap click sound. They still make that click sound, but it's not as snappy as it used to be. And why, ha why do you have to have this stuff that far out? I don't understand. Or are they just kind of making the rotor that much more compact where they kind of have to have it on the outside, otherwise it's going to hit the spool under load. But it's 2,500 $2, size reel. It's not going to get any heavy load anyway other than, what, 5 pounds, 6 pounds? And, uh, yeah, we have the rash guard underneath the lower rotor arm, underneath the handle knob, the bottommost portion of the reel. And that does look a little different than what we have today. We don't know what it's hiding. We don't know if there's exposed internals, which we doubt. Shimano's pretty good at uh, incorporating a, a well-sealed gearbox. Uh, that look, that rash guard looks to be covering just screws. That's another thing Shimano does very well. Shimano hates showing off screws. Plain and simple. They don't want you to see them, and I'm not complaining. And let's see. What else can we gather from this image it looks almost like there's dimples on that spool lip but we're gonna say they're not that just might be a reflection or something like that so it comes with a it looks like a 2500 hg it looks like it incorporates x ship which we know that's not going anywhere that name that's sticking around it's a cool name and the simplest way to boil that down is it's a dual bearing supported pinion gear kind of centrally located to the main gear for maximum winding efficiency Essentially, that's that's what it comes down to. Um, pretty much everybody does that. <laughs> it's got a cool name. I do like it in the Baycasters, though. That dual bearing support for the pinion goes a long way, especially in freshwater, for maintaining that light new performance. And, uh, man, it's silver. But what is that color of the spool? What What is going on? We can't go by that. We've seen previous leaks, pre-release photos of certain reels from Shimano that were like, damn, that's a nice color. And then it comes out in like, like a whitish silver. It's like, huh? <laughs> what happened to that badass color that you were coming out with? And then they come out with this. So I, I, I guess that's, that's pretty much all we got. I can't really go much further into detail with that scene in front of me. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking closer and closer at that picture. And it's like, what is that? Where the answer reverse on and off switch is. Is it a switch? I can't tell now. I mean, there's something sticking out there. That definitely ain't the, the handle cap on the opposite side. But man, I got nothing. I ain't got nothing. Looks cool. We're definitely going to get one. Hands down, we're going to tear it down and see how it compares to the previous version. We're going to see how it compares to the sustain. We have all the reviews already out there to let us know whether this thing's a winner or not. And uh, judging by its design, the other thing I'll say... It looks like it has a spool that's a little bit taller than what you would normally find looking at just the ratio and relationship to height and width. It looks like there's a little bit more line 
if you look at the knuckle of his pointer finger, middle finger, what is that finger going up the blank now? Pinky, ring, middle, pointer. Okay. <laughs> I got so confused there. I'm like, does he have an extra finger? Is this photoshopped? Sorry about that. <laughs> Guys, this is very late. In the, it's like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I just got done doing a render. This leak literally just came across my lap. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to include it in the back end of my uh, <laughs> the video I just put out. So excuse me if I'm a little wacky, I'm a little tired wired. And uh, yeah, it definitely does look like there could be a little bit more height. We like tall spools. Tall spools means less of that switching direction of direction of the line coming off the spool when you make a cast. So you don't get that turbulence that gets thrown into those collector stripper and you know the first three guides on the rod. So I, I, I guess we're gonna end it here. We're gonna assume it's got some um, forged machined aluminum main gear. Uh, it's a Stratic. We're probably not getting brass. Sean doesn't really do brass in their spinners, which is okay. You can't really fault them there. Their gears last pretty well. You know, they Shimano spinning reels are hands down the smoothest reels out of the box. Daiwa reels are smooth out of the box. Some are like exactly that of the Shimano reels. But sometimes they take a little run-in period to get uh, to that level. And you know what? I, I think I'm just going to end it right here. I'm tired. You guys are probably tired of hearing me yap. And uh, for you guys that are still with me, you guys, if you've been around for long enough, you guys know that I appreciate every second of every minute you guys spend here because without you, I would literally not have a platform to stand on. And uh, yeah, so it's with all that being said, uh, tight lines, and I'll, I'll see you soon. This was, a, this was an unexpected uh, leak to come across uh, my, my table. So, yes, I hope you guys enjoy this. And, uh, yeah, until next time, tight lines, I'll see you soon.